Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2buzz.com and welcome to the 19th Q&A session and I'm sorry that I couldn't do this Q&A session, I was not feeling well. Uh, I had to do this Q&A session last week but from last week I'm not that well, uh, it's a lot of cold so my voice is also uh, going to be a little bit uh, different. So please bear with the same and again I've got a bunch of questions and uh, one more good thing that I want to share with you guys is that our YouTube channel that's Kiki Ranjit on YouTube has crossed 10,000 subscribers and I'm thankful to all of you because without your support it wouldn't have been possible. Thank you, thank you and thank you. So let's quickly get away with this Q&A session. And the first question comes from Prashant Rai and he asks us, hey Ranjit, thumbs up for your videos, thank you. Can you please suggest me your DSLR? My budget is Indian rupees 35,000. Uh, to be frank, I do not review a lot of DSLRs, but yeah, for this budget, you can get a decent DSLR. For example, I'm using the Canon 550D. It's an excellent entry-level DSLR and it can also take great video footage. For example, the video footage that you're seeing right now is being shot with the Canon 550D. You can also get some Nikon uh, counterparts with this. I'm not very familiar with the model names, but yes, I think so for 35,000, you should get a good DSLR. Again, uh, I would uh, ask my audience to give this suggestions in the comment section below that will be highly helpful uh, the next question comes from sids h85 and he uh, goes something like this hey ranjit your channel is awesome and really helpful in all respects great job thanks a lot i would like to know which processor and motherboard i should go for uh, uh, for 3d uh, uh, rendering and photoshop editing an i5 third generation processor or i7 second generation process processor my budget can be stretched to a maximum of 22k for the same uh, th that is uh, rupees 22,000 uh, now I already own a Zotac GTS 451 GB graphic card and 6 GB of DDR3 RAM my main concern is whether the extra money I pour in an i7 will be future proof or is uh, the i5 third generation more than enough uh, uh, the thing is that for video editing, I would generally uh, suggest to go with an i7. Again, do note that i5 is also a very capable processor. It has four physical cores, but the i7 has hyper threading. So it helps a little bit in video uh, rendering. Uh, the thing is that you did not mention the uh, amount of uh, work that you're going to do. For example, if you're going to make videos or stuff, how much amount of video footage that you're going to produce every day if it's less than let's say 15 or 20 minutes i would say that you can easily go with an i5 it's a very powerful processor and will be uh, uh, helpful again but again uh, uh, i7 will definitely give it a little bit of help it won't be 100 percent performance benefit but i would say about 30 percent more performance benefit for video rendering and stuff Again, for your budget of 22K uh, with a decent motherboard, uh, then I would suggest only the i5 might fit because i7 second generation, I don't recall the exact pricing, but it's approximately about rupees 18,000. So I would say if the budget is tight, go for an i5. If you can stretch it uh, without breaking your bank, go for an i7. I hope it answers your question. The next question comes from Abhim7. Uh, and this is a very peculiar question and uh, goes something like this does blu-ray is only made for storing 1080p videos is it possible to store and play 1080p videos on a dvd rom drive the thing is that uh, the blu-ray is not specifically made for blu-ray uh, what do you say uh, 1080p content or a dvd rom is not made for specifically for 1080p content these are just media storage the thing uh, the main difference between a blu-ray uh, what do you say disc and a dvd rom drive is a standard dvd rom drive will have a capacity of 4.2 gb whereas a standard the blu-ray drive uh, will have a capacity of 25 gb uh, the dual layer, uh, uh, what do you say, Blu-ray drive have a capacity of 50 GB. Hence, for storing these uh, 1080p videos or high definition videos, uh, the Blu-ray format is, what do you say, suggested because the file sizes are pretty large. For example, uh, for the video I'm shooting right now, uh, approximately about 12 minutes of footage, that is HD footage, takes almost about 4 GB. So, I can definitely fit this on a, what do you say, a DVD ROM drive, but the footage that I will get is just about 14 or 15 minutes. But again, if it was a Blu-ray drive, I would have fit, uh, able to fit an entire movie. So I hope this answers your question. The next question comes from uh, Ashik Ilahi and he asks me, Hi Ranjit sir, your videos uh, are helpful to me. I want to know how to install third party apps on Windows 7.5 phone. I have a Windows phone that's a Samsung Omia W 
and I want to install third party apps because it's free to download from the web. Again, uh, I think so what you're mentioning is known as side loading in Android world. Uh, to be very frank, I'm not very familiar with the Windows phone because I just used it for a day or two. And I don't know if it is possible to side load the stuff on Windows uh, 7.5 phone. If again, I'll ask my audience to help me in this. If you guys are already using a Windows uh, phone, uh, is it possible to side load? And if it's easy, just share your opinions in the comment section below. It'll be highly helpful. The next question comes from Bala B and it goes something like this. Hi Ranjit, I am Bala. I like your videos. Great information you are giving. Thanks. I am using a Wi-Fi broadband in my home. Uh, when I am streaming YouTube videos from my Galaxy Note, it is slow. But when I stream from a laptop, it streams continuously. What is the logic behind this? Again, Bala, you did not mention how is your laptop connected? Is it connected via physical uh, wire or again it's Wi-Fi? Because there can be a lot of uh, things uh, that can go wrong with Wi-Fi. The first major thing that uh, can go wrong is your Wi-Fi settings and encryption. If you're using those old type of encryption like what you say WEP or even uh, WPA with TKPI, it will drastically slow down your throughput of Wi-Fi. The best encryption that can you can use on a Wi-Fi connection is WPA2 plus AES. That gives the best throughput. So check with that and I have tested a lot of uh, Android phones and uh, in my testing I generally use them over Wi-Fi and my Wi-Fi settings are WPA2 plus AES and I'm easily able to stream YouTube videos on high def content without any issues. So I would say that check your Wi-Fi connection settings. I hope this helps. And the next question again comes from Abim7 and it goes something like this. This is somewhat out of context question but is it as advisable to buy? electronic items from online stores like flipkart.com etc again i can't talk about other online stores or whatever that are available but yes flipkart is highly reliable and i do a lot of shopping and incidentally i just uh, got one uh, shipment from flipkart that i had ordered and i have been using flipkart for a long time and every two or three months i generally uh, get things shipped from Flipkart and they have never dis disappointed me. And the advantage of Flipkart is that for most of the products, you can opt for cash on delivery. So you only pay them the cash when the product is delivered to you. Uh, I'll also place the link of Flipkart in the below. So you can click that to go to that site. So uh, I have used Flipkart a lot and I did not have any problems. And I know many people who are using Flipkart. So Flipkart is very good, but I can't talk in general about other webs uh, e-commerce websites in India. Uh, the next question comes from Yeshwanath Sam and it goes something like this. Hello sir, your reviews are really helpful. Uh, thank you. I'm a CSE student and I want to buy a laptop priced uh, between 40 to 45,000 rupees. More preferably for me, it's more battery backup and some are asking me to go for Ultrabook coming these days and I use a net a lot. I need long hours of battery life but decent gaming experience. Please suggest me a best laptop uh, with a price range and a good battery life. Will Ultrabooks really fulfill my need? Yes, the good thing about Ultrabooks is that these are thin and light uh, laptops. And with Ultrabooks, you generally get very good battery life somewhere around 6 hours mark. Uh, but again, to be frank, I do not review a lot of laptops. So I can't give you brand specific uh, uh, model numbers or whatever. But yes, have a look at Ultrabooks. But do note that uh, on many Ultrabooks, you would not find this DVD-ROM slot. And as you have also mentioned that you also want to do gaming on this Ultrabook. So I would uh, suggest that you look for Ultrabook which has a dedicated GPU uh, rather than just the built-in uh, Intel HD graphics. That will be helpful in gaming. I hope this info helps. And the next question comes from Abdul Kader and it's a peculiar question. Have you got the Nexus 7 from India Times? Yes, uh, this is regarding the uh, uh, Google Nexus 7 tablet. This is the one and I ordered it from India Times. And yes, I got it, and but I didn't get it on time. It took them almost a month to get it to me and the whole experience was not that great. I had to make a n number of calls to get this. So needless to say, I was not impressed. And the Nexus one, uh, 7 that I got is not perfect. I am having some screen issues with this and I have already made a video regarding the same. So you can check out that video for more info regarding the same. And the next question comes from Sahil Dihar uh, and it goes something like this. Hi sir, I want to, to know whether I will be able to play latest games like NFS Speed, uh, Battlefield 3 etc on this rig at 1080p. Intel Pentium Dual Core E5 400 4GB RAM 
ATI 5770-1GB graphic card, hard drive is 320GB gigabyte uh, motherboard. Sadly, no. Uh, the uh, rig that you have won't be able to play 1080p uh, content uh, even with the what do you say medium settings comfortably. You need to upgrade your processor as well as the graphic card. Uh, again, uh, the next question comes from Sangaram007 uh, and it goes something like this. Hello Ranjit sir, my another question is about graphic card. I saw AMD ATI uh, cards with manufacturers like Power, Color, Asus, Sapphire, MSI, XFX, Gigabyte. Which will be the best and why? Can you please review the above manufacturers graphic card, compare them if it's possible. Uh, Sangram, it won't be possible for me to review all these graphic cards and compare them. But uh, yes, uh, all these manufacturers produce graphic cards from A AMD ATI. And I would say go with a graphic card that offers you the best warranty and look at uh, the user reviews, how well they honor the warranty. Generally, I found uh, good experience with Asus graphic cards and even with the uh, MSI graphic cards. So uh, again, you should check out in your local area which uh, manufacturer offers the best warranty. Uh, so go with the one. And the next uh, question comes from Imad Sahim. And uh, it goes something like this. Hi Ranjit, I'm using the Galaxy Note for just last six months now. And the Note 2 is out. Just a month ago, I got the ICS on my original Note and I'm enjoying the same. Should I upgrade or rather wait? Is it worthwhile? Again, uh, this is a very common question that I get. Again, uh, ask yourself, uh, is your Note able to suffice your needs? Are you happy with the same? If you are, there is no need to upgrade because this smart phone upgrade cycle is a very vicious one because every seven or eight months you will get a new smartphone that offers some new feature or something like that unless you're not satisfied with your existing smartphone i suggest that you just do not upgrade because the note one is a very capable device it has a dual core processor yes the note two has a quad core processor but again I do not find any major applications that can take advantage of the quad core. Uh, for now, I would say uh, Note 2 uh, is ideal for someone who is not already using a Note 1. But if you are already happy with the Note 1, I would say you can skip the Note 2. And the next question comes from Jai Sharma. Uh, uh, can we unroot our rooted Android phones to maintain its warranty? Again, this will depend from model to model. For example, I'm using the Galaxy Nexus. It's very easy to root the phone and also to unroot the phone. I would suggest that you go to XDA forums and they have specific forums for every phone. So look at those uh, forum and post your question there. Some of the phones, it's very easy to unroot it and go back and you can even lock the boot to loader. So I would suggest go to XDA forums and check that out. And uh, next question comes from Swaran Ajay. And it goes like this. Hi Ranjit, I love your videos that are very helpful. My question is, is it possible to use a LED full HD monitor as a HD TV uh, with a HD set top box? If possible, what are the specs? What we should consider before buying them? Uh, monitor, HD set top box, HDMI port, DVI port, etc. I'm also wondering, is it possible to have HD video through VGA cable on a monitor without the PC? Thanks in advance. Uh, the thing is, last thing, you cannot do the same. You can't have a HDMI input and transfer it to a, what do you say, VGI input. Does not work. Uh, so forget about that. HDMI to VGI will not work. But yes, you can use a, what do you say, a LED full HD uh, monitor as a television. But just make sure that it has a HDMI uh, port. And uh, to enjoy television, it should also support built-in speakers. If uh, it has that feature, then you can certainly use the same with a HD, what do you say, set-top box. And the next question comes from the DK uh, ROSSI. Uh, it goes something like this. Hi, Ranjit. I'm planning to buy a new smartphone. I'm looking uh, at Micromax A90 and A100. I'm too much confused about choosing these two models. First thing was A100 has got a 5 inch LCD screen with 16.8 million colors and the A90 has got an AMOLED 4.3 inch screen but only with 262k colors as mentioned on the website. The biggest con of A90 I think uh, is that uh, it has just 262k colors. What do you think considering the screen and colors which will be better? Is AMOLED screen with only 262k colors sufficient? 
Uh, I actually did not uh, test this uh, Micromax A90 till now because I'm having a problem uh, getting a unit. I'm trying to get this unit from the past two weeks from the market and it's unavailable. But yes, I did uh, review this uh, Micromax A100 and it's a great phone and the screen quality surprisingly was very good. You can look at this video for the review. Again, as I said, I did not personally test this A90. But uh, from what I've heard, the screen quality on the same is also very good. So if you want my opinion regarding the same, just wait for a week or so because I think so. I might be able to get this A90 for review uh, next uh, week. I hope that answers your question. The next question comes from Bhupendra Kumar and it goes something like this. Hi, sir. Please uh, help me about uh, Microsoft Windows 7 OEM version. What's the difference between OEM and a full pack is uh, a microsoft windows 7 starter oem good buy is this a full pack uh, for a new pc or there is some restriction in the oem version or this uh, please help me uh, the first thing uh, that i want to clarify is the difference between an oem and a full pack a oem version is bundled when you buy a new pc by the manufacturer or if you're just building a pc you can also uh, buy a oem uh, pack of windows it's generally cheaper compared to the full pack but the problem with the oem version is that when you cannot migrate this license to a new pc so uh, once you have installed it on this PC, the license is with that PC. If you sell this PC to somebody else, the license goes with the same. With a full pack, you can just install, install it on any PC. And let's say you want to upgrade to a new PC, you can just uninstall and install it on another PC. So that's the main difference between uh, OEM and a full pack. Again, this uh, Windows 7 Starter Edition uh, is uh, again a limited uh, version of Windows uh, that is specifically packed for uh, countries like India, etc. This also works fine, but it has some certain limitations. Again, if you want a full experience, I would not go for the starter edition. Again, uh, the last question comes from Priyankan and it goes something like this. Hi Ranjit, on visiting Intel's website, one can find three different kind of processor categories. That is one for laptops, one for desktops and servers. What is the basic difference between the three and does the performance only depend on the gigahertz or other uh, factors also? Yes, there are three types of processors, but again, these are different. For example, uh, let me first talk about the laptops and the desktops. For the laptop processors, these are generally low power uh, processors that consume a lot less power and hence they are optimized for laptops where uh, battery efficiency, etc. is very important. Uh, generally, the clock speeds also on these laptop variants is a little bit lower. The second mainstream is the desktop processors uh, that we generally get. That's the i5, i7, whatever. Um, and now moving to the uh, what is a server pro processor these are generally Xeon processors etc from Intel and the main difference between the desktop and the what you call the server processor is the cache on the server processor that are Xeon processors etc the cache will be very high for example 6 MB or even 12 MB or something like that because uh, for, for a server you might be running about two dozen processors at the same time hence this larger cache helps a lot and one more important thing that you'll find on uh, server class processors is that they support ECC RAM that is uh, error correction RAM that is not found on the standard desktop processor so that's the main difference uh, so these are some of the questions for the 19th Q&A session if you would like that I answer some of your tech related questions please post them below in the comments below and start it with the Q&A tab I hope you found this video helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.